Hello! Today I'm going to build a battery using these cells. I've got eight cells here. They're lithium ion phosphate, L-I-F-E-P-O-4. Um, they're 32650s. Sometimes they're called 32700, depends how you measure the length, I suppose. 32 millimeters diameter and 65 millimeters in length. That probably doesn't include the two screw studs. Um, but I'm going to assemble these into some uh, frames, which are these things, which have a 32 millimeter diameter hole and little stops here to stop the cell when you place it into the hole. Um, sometimes these are tight, sometimes they're loose. There's slight variation in the diameter of these cells. But uh, yeah, let's start to assemble my battery pack. So let's start with one of these um, holders. Now these are, if I can get them apart, they are two cells, little holders, and they've got these little dovetail uh, connectors. And so you can build these into um, however big an array you want. I'm going to do a four by two array and I'm going to put four cells in series, but with two cells in parallel. So it's a 4S 2P battery. Uh, so I need to connect that like that. So that's what I need for one end. And then I'm going to need the same thing again for the other end. And I've just realized I've done them slightly differently. It probably doesn't matter. These are all in a line and these have been done in a square formation, but never mind. That's uh, fine. So let's start populating one of these ends with cells. Now these are male male cells. They've got a male, I think it's uh, M4 threaded stud on each end. A lot of the ones you see on AliExpress, in fact, I think all the ones I've seen so far, have a female threaded insert, a hex nut type thing, welded on the positive end and then a male on the negative. And the idea is that you uh, screw them in long lines and then assemble these cells into big frames to make um, your series. But I'm not gonna do it like that. I'm gonna do it uh, a different way. So I wanted male to male. Um, I'm going to put some details in the description below this video where I got these cells. It was a company called, well, they're called Aerotech Projects Limited, and they have a website um, which is lithiumbatteryshop.uk. So, yes, I'll put the details of um, that place. I actually went there. They're in uh, a little village outside Ipswich. Um, I went there to pick up these cells. I thought uh, it'd be a nice little drive up to Ipswich. Quite a long drive but it was worth it. And I do have um, 40 of these cells, slightly more actually, because ultimately I intend to build an eight by five array. But in this video, I'm just gonna build a very simple 4S 2P. So positive is um, this assembly here. Negative is just flat. So let's put a couple of positives uh, face down at this end. And then of course the next cell, I need the positives facing up like so. And then positives down for this one. And then positives up here. And then I'll put the other end cap on. Now, like I say, some of these are an interference fit, but some of them are a bit loose. So these end caps don't actually hold themselves on very well. I'm gonna turn it round. Uh, that way so that my dovetails uh, are both on this side and act as little feet so the battery can sit down like that so that's it i've got my positives negatives positives uh, oh is that the right way around yeah that's a negative side the positive is on that side so that's the array of cells now i need some means of connecting them together and for that, I'm going to use these printed circuit boards, which I made a little while back. Um, so this, uh, these two holes will connect my two cells in parallel. 
and then these two will connect my negatives here to my positives. So I can place that one on there and similarly place that one on there. And then I have a whole set of washers and nuts here, uh, which I will place down on here, tighten them up. And that's, um, that's uh, these two linked. And then on the other side, I'll link across the middle here. Now, what I absolutely <laughs> cannot do is place another of these boards in that position because that would create a dead short around there and these cells would discharge uh, rather quickly. I had an interesting chat with um, Gary, it was at, um, oh, that's a bit dodgy, um, lithiumbatteryshop.uk and he was saying that these cells are of such a size that actually if you short them, they don't have enough energy, I mean they will get hot and they will vent, but they don't have enough energy in them to get so hot that they would combust. So they're considered fairly safe, this particular 6 amp hour size, 6,000 milliamp hours, um, for things like transportation, shipping them, um, you know, between countries and um, just static uh, batteries in packages, uh, simply because they're unlikely to get to that combustion stage. Right, these M4 nuts require a 7 mil uh, nut spinner. So I'll do those up finger tight and then put washers and nuts on this side, like so. And he was telling me all about um, the phase change properties of these cells and how uh, the charge curve is very sharp at first and then it's very flat in the middle. So as these cells are charging, the voltage barely changes in that uh, middle section and then once they get charged of course the voltage shoots up at the end and that's the way to detect whether they're fully charged or fully discharged but because the voltage curve is so flat in the middle it's very difficult to determine state of charge from the cell voltage. So again use the nut spinner to tighten these uh, nuts onto those boards. Now when I flip it over to the other side I'm safe to put a board there but definitely not um, across those four or those four but across the middle that's fine. So these will be my uh, most negative points and what I'm going to have to do is put a cell, uh, a PCB, a connector, a bus bar if you like, sticking out the side because of course I need to parallel up these two cells and similarly I'm going to have to have a board sticking out that side. So my ultimate positive and negatives will be on these sides. Better get the nuts on these. And then you can see the flow. Yeah, let's get the nuts on first and then I can show you what I'm doing. Now this idea of using printed circuit boards as cell interconnects, um, I haven't done that one yet. Um, I've tested these up to 10 amps and uh, there's no temperature rise on the PCBs and this is one ounce copper so it's uh, no special copper thickness uh, on these boards. I do have one of these boards actually doing 20 amps. Now whether there's a temperature rise on that board it's hard to tell because I know that the wires running into that board do get warm so if the board's warming up I can't tell whether it's heat transferred from the wires or heat being generated in the copper so I'm going to have to do uh, more tests on that. Oh, am I uh, a nut short? Yeah, I appear to be missing a nut. I'll have to get another one. And uh, yeah, there it is. So this is my most positive connection. So I can uh, connect onto these two holes to go to other things like BMS or um, whatever my load is and whatever my charging system is. I'm not going to do anything on charging and uh, loads in this video. Actually, I will get a couple of light bulbs and just make sure this, this works. So you can see I've got the three boards on this side and then on the other side I've got two boards. So let's get um, a light bulb and check that it lights up. So this pack is uh, nominal 3.2 times 4 so that's 12.8 volts and this is where lithium ion phosphate is a bit nicer to work with than 
uh, lithium ion NMC, nickel manganese cobalt, because the cell voltages on those are uh, 3.7 volts nominal. I think these are 3.2 volts, which means that you get, uh, when you put four in series, you get 12.8. When you put uh, eight in series, you get 25.6 volts nominal. Now, of course, uh, when these cells are fully charged or being charged, they will push up. I think the upper limit on these is 3.65 typically. The lower limit, I'm not entirely sure, something like two and a half volts. But anyway, 12.8 um, volts nominal. So this is a 24 volt uh, vehicle brake light bulb for trucks. They tend to have 24 volt systems. So I should be fine putting that across uh, these two outer connections. So let's do that. And uh, that lights up at about half brightness. That's fine. Now I'm going to also try it with this 12 volt bulb. This is a 55 watt 12 volt uh, headlight bulb, H7 type headlight bulb. So that should uh, light up nice and bright. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is plug that into these two um, four millimeter banana sockets and then I can use these ends. They're actually not big enough to go under the nuts, but I can just poke them in the holes. Let me just get that lined up, ready to go. Make sure that we can see that bulb. Uh, resting it there is probably not brilliant, but we'll see how we go. Right, so connect it to the most positive and most negative ends of the battery. And uh, yeah, that lights up, lights up really nice and bright. So 55 watts, 12 volts, that's taking Ooh, at least four amps, isn't it? 48 watts would be four amps. Of course, this is a bit more than 12 volts. This is 12.8 volts. But yeah, that lights up at pretty much full brightness. So my battery pack seems to be fine. Now, my pack capacity, I've got uh, two cells in parallel. So we've got 12 amp hours. And then if we multiply the 12 amp hours uh, by 12.8 volts, let's get a calculator. So 12 amp hours multiplied by 12.8 volts is 153 watt hours. Um, so approximately 150 watt hours is the capacity of this pack. Let's compare that with a couple of power tool batteries. Um, these are fairly clearly smaller. These of course have um, lithium nickel manganese cobalt cells in them. So this four amp hour is 72 watt hours. Uh, this five amp hour is 90 watt hours. And the pack that I've just built is 153 watt hours. So that was just a quick video on uh, a nice easy way to assemble these uh, six amp hour lithium ion phosphate cells. Uh, make sure that you've got male studs, threaded studs at each end. Buy a few of these plastic holders which you can get on eBay and AliExpress. Uh, the PCB is slightly more difficult. You're gonna to have to make these PCBs. Uh, the spacing between these cells is some really bizarre measurement. I think it's 34.4 millimeters but what you can do is you can uh, create an array of cells and then measure the distance over a, a wider distance and then simply divide it down to work out what this uh, measurement is across here but it's not a nice uh, neat measurement like 35 millimeters no it's something awkward like 34.4 and uh, yeah you can very quickly build yourself a uh, 12 volt ish it's 12.8 volts uh, 150 watt hour lithium ion phosphate battery pack using essentially these three parts, the cells, the cell holders, and the PCBs. And that's all I'm going to do in this video. So cheerio.